All right. So uh, welcome back, everyone, for the second uh, talk of our uh, educational session on 5G and IoT. Um, the second uh, talk would be presented by Professor uh, Jiwa Wang uh, uh, from Chingu University. And the title of the talk would be Design of RF Transceivers uh, for Medical Applications in 5G IoT Era. Uh, so we are, we are very uh, happy to have uh, Professor Wang join us. Uh, he is actually online as well. Um, so just a quick introduction. Uh, Professor Wang received his BS, MS, and PhD degrees in electronic engineering in 1983, 85, and 1990, respectively, from Tsinghua University in Beijing. Um, and he is currently a full professor in the Institute of Microelectronics uh, since 1997 there. Uh, he was also a visiting scholar at CMU and Leuven in uh, 93 and 94, and a visiting professor as the, at the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology 2014 and 2015. His uh, current research uh, mainly focuses on, on CMOS, RFIC, and biomedical applications, uh, which involves RFIDs, PLLs, low-power wireless transceivers, and smart link equipment combined with leading-edge RFIC and digital imaging signal processing techniques. Um, he has co-authored 13 chapters and books and over two, 209 papers in international journals and more than 537 papers in conferences. Um, with over 249 papers in Chinese journals and holds 122 Chinese and nine U.S. patents. Uh, Professor Wang has uh, served as the chairman of IEEE SSCS Beijing chapter um, for over for about 10 years, from 1999 to 2009, and has been an ADCOM member for IEEE SSCS, a, tec a technology program committee member of IEEE SSCC, steering committee member for IEEE ASSCC, Technical Program Chair for ASSCC in 2013. Uh, he was also the guest editor of IEEE JSSC, IEEE SSCS Distinguished Lecturer in 2018 and 19. And he has also been an IEEE CAS Distinguished Lecturer in 2020-2021, which is uh, ongoing. Um, he's also been Associate Editor-in-Chief for IEEE Open Journal of Circuits and Systems, an Associate uh, Editor of IEEE Transactions on CAS 1 and 2, and the IEEE transactions on Biocas and other, uh, and has uh, held other administrative and expert committee positions in the chi in China's uh, National Science and Technology. So we are extremely uh, happy to have him present the second uh, talk for us, and I'll uh, start uh, the the video, and uh, and please hang around for Q and A uh, at the end of this talk. Hello, everybody. This is Zhuhua Wang from Tsinghua University, China. The tutorial today is the design of an energy efficiency transceiver for medical application in 5G IoT area. Let's go to the context outline of my speak, of my talk. The first, I will be talking about the drivers adoptions and the technology behind 5G for Internet of Things. And secondly, I will be talking about the research and the development activities of a medical instrument or with the medical equipment, medical device. I will address something about how to work a design to be used in medical applications. And the third, I will give some design considerations of a transceiver using for the RMD, implanted medical device. Finally, I give some possible applications and the research directions of a wireless transceiver for medical area. Finally, I will give a conclusion. The first, the driver adoption and the technology behind 5G for IoT. Let's see a brief history of our mobile communications. The first, the 1G analog mobile communications is to transmit a voice on a analog cellular phones. And the second, G, second generation mobile communication 
is for the digital phone cells. We can send the voice, we can send the text messenger, we can provide a basic data service. After the second generation, most countries we have 3G mobile communications. At this time, we are integrated the, the voice, internet, mobile messages, and some broadband for uh, improved, improved internet using of applications. And today, in most countries, or most areas, we're using four generation mo mobile communication systems. We can transfer voice, we can transfer message, we can transfer through a high speed internet. And also, the network can provide high capacity mobile multimedia. We can even transfer fast mobile broadband in date. What's the next? Next, in many countries, it is still under construction is five generation mobile communications. We Using such network, we can connect trillions of IOTs, that including the devices, and the supporting smart homes, smart buildings, even smart cities. Of course, still have some research carried on for the sixth generation and beyond. And what is, will be the sixth generation be like? What is the application and the technologies? General speaking, within this year, the 2020s, anything can be launched on the network that is belong to fifth generation. Otherwise, cannot be used from commercialized. Those technologies is sixth generation or beyond. Great courageous, more energy efficient, and ultra low latency. The network must support the green demand for mobile broadband service, especially to deliver high quality video content fast, smarter for virtual and augment reality which are just around the corner and requires a network able to transfer huge amount of data. Another demand example is our need to be connected to 50, that is IoT. There are 25 plus billion of IT devices already connected worldwide. It's expected to be 75 billions by the year 2025. 5G technologies will be a wireless network to support the future growth of IoTs. It will be called on to connect everything in a secure way. Dynamical allocate network resource, reduce latency requirement for mission, critical applications, and so on. By the 5Gs, in general speaking, we can provide high speed, lowest delay, and a large number of IP names, IP address. So what industries are adopting five generation for IoTs? First, and this is, will be talked in my tutorial, is the healthcare. The healthcare organizations continue to innovate and digitize their operations. All these generate more data, require more benefits. 5G of tomorrow will help hospitals and health providers. 
for quick transmit large image files to share with specialists to expand telemedicine across wide and mobile network. Monitoring a patient health real time and remotely. Communicate across language, no matter where patient lives, using artificial intelligence to determine the diagnosis and predict complications. Of course, we have many other industry will adopting 5G for IoTs. For example, the financial service, the retail, the manufacturer, the transportation, those we will not discuss today. What is the building blocks of 5G mobile communications for IoT? A quick look at some of the pieces required to create our future smart cities, smart homes, and smart workplaces. To start, the three categories of IoTs. Enable things to capture information. Enable things to process information. Enable securities and the privacy when doing the both of this. Of course, we have still have some enable things to deliver information. Enable things to memory storage things that already there. That is not really require the five generation network. We must address those three. Those three. And among those three, the first two categories are functional building blocks. They are required for building intelligence into things. This differentiate the IoT from Euro Internet. That the third category, that is a de facto requirement to maintain a high security and a privacy. More device, more sensor, more user, and more conversations, more data. Those requires more bandwidth and less latency to create smart environment, smart cities, smart buildings, smart vehicles, smart clothing, and smart portables. With the 5G being wireless network, gluing the IoT together, however, the current building block won't power 5G for IoT. So when we develop a circuit, an integrated circuit for medical applications, we must remember 
It should be a device with medical greed. For those things, that is medical devices. And uh, such devices must be recognized in the official national formularies. And uh, the device should be intended for use in diagnosis or disease or other conditions. The applications will intend to affect the structure or any functions of the body of man or other animals. That means the medical greed. For a medical device, usually in all around the country, they have three different classes. Class one. That is general controlled by the government. Class two, it is general control with special treatment. And uh, the difficult things, the complicated things is class three. The class three is some general control and uh, some pro market approval without the pre market approval, such device can only be demo, can only be measured inside the laboratory, and can't be sold, be applied to a market, to a market, uh, market. By such considerations, we think how we can do the research and the development of our medical systems. Of course, we starting from the concept, and then we design the specifications, and we do some research. The research including some design review, design, prototype, verifications, for a commercial electronic devices. Here, up to here, we can go to market. But for a medical device, such things still cannot be sold in the market. It must go another validations for many period of, for many time, many, many long period of time. They will consider about the functional, they will consider about the risk, they will consider about the safety and others. After the validations is passed, they can really do the final technology transfer and to the larger produ productions. So, for research and the development of medical systems, we need more time. We need more iterations. We need more consider about the risk to the patient, to the human body. Okay, for such case, when we design uh, electrical things, we want the system can be used in variety of applications. At least it is not only used one applications. So the better things is the development, uh, we development a platform. Using such platform, we can develop different medical devices what inside the platform. It should be have some communication protocol and the modules. It should be have some information securities. It should be have some sensor modules, pacing modules, a battery or wireless charger. 
the leading impedance measurement models to test the impedance of the tissues of home body or animals. Sometimes we need some accelerator modules. Also, we have some methodologies for the firmware download modules and some RTC models, remote telecing modules. In our discussion, we are addressed on one thing. The thing is the portable or implantable device. That means an electronic implantable medical device. Then they are designed to be fully or partially implanted in the human body through surgeon. And it will remain inside the body for several hours, several years, even permanently. Those definition is just follow the definition from these people. RMDs, RMDs here. The RMDs, there are some examples here. We have the deep, deep brain neural stimulate, cochlear implement, and call capsule, and the gastric stimulator, and many, many others. Outside, outside the human body, we will have some external host devices here. And also, we have some equipment-like things and some user interface to communicate with the doctors. That is a medical system with portable or implementable medical devices. I give some examples here again. Those devices are all invested or all developed are all researched in my group. For example, the total hip replacement, the capsule endoscopy, the cochlear implement, the neural stimulus, the normal neural stimulators, the total knee replacement devices, and also some robotic robot hands. I will say something about the information securities. You know, normally when we using the telecommunication systems, we say security is important. The security should affect our safety of our bank, our password, and so on. But for a medical device, if a patient have some medical device implanted here. The doctor that is regular accept, accept access the device. They can access the device and get the data, get the information. Besides them, some others, they are here from you. That is unnecessary. And even worse, the other things, the other peoples, they attacked you. Now we can understand the enable technologies is an integrated circuit for medical device. 
still similar to other applications. The whole system is completed in such block diagrams. We need to have some sensor. We need to have some analog front end. We need to have some analog to digital convert. Microcontroller, digital system processor, and the radio part. Especially, we have some power management or battery or any other harvester. Thinking we are working in the area of information science. When we talking about information science or information technologies, we are talking four categories. The acquisition of information, processing of information, storage of information, and the transmission of information. If we limited all such four things to a medical signal or life signal, especially today, we are talking about the design conditions of transceiver, only radio part for the front end sensor, microcontroller, uh, and so on. We don't consider about that. Today, we're only talking about the transceiver used for implement medical device. Okay. We have a lot of well-known implemented medical device in clinical applications. For example, the cardiac pacemakers, implantable defibrillators, cochlear implants, neural stimulators, limb function stimulations, bloody stimulate and so on. We have many others. How we can power a implemented, implemented medical device? Of course, we have two options. One is we using the battery, a small size battery. The second one is the wireless power. So by any method of the power provided to the system, we need to lowering the circuit power consumptions. And also we need to review to evaluate the available space for the battery or for the power supply inside the IMDs, the implementable medical device. We also need to think about the lifetime and the reliability of the requirement before we choose how to power the system. For example, for a cardiac pacemaker, the device should working inside a human body for 10 years. And for some other devices, we only need the power for a few hours. So the lifetime is quite important. And for the reliability, it also has some important uh, effect the applications. Give you an example also for the pacemaker. If we're using the chargeable pacemaker inside the body, during the charging, if the device has some explosion, then mostly damage to the patient. So when we design uh, medical systems, especially 
a system working inside the human body. Before we select the battery, we select the power systems. We need to think about using battery or using wireless. In this time, at least we consider three factors. The first, the physical space of the battery, of the power system. The second, the lifetime of the electronic systems. It is how many hours, how many days, how many months, how many years, and also safety to the patient. For the requirement of power, also for we deliver the date using a wireless channel, we have such requirement, we have such requirement that is including power and the data rate. Usually we have some biomonitoring systems. The power consumption is smaller, usually less than the microwatt. And the target data rate is smaller also. It is usually the 10 kbit per second. And the last time, usually a few days. For such case, we first priority for us is select the battery. And for other devices, I give another example so is the capsule and the scalp. The power consumption usually less than some 10 micro watt. And the data rate is high. Usually it is larger than one megabit per second. But the working time is smaller, usually some 10 hours. For such case, the first priority to select the power is the battery. And we have many others. For example, we have some neural recording stimulators. The power consumption is medium. The data rate is smaller. And in such case, usually we can use the inductive power or battery. Anyway, when we select the batteries, we need to think about the power consumption. The data transmission is the important part of the power consumption. We must consider the transmission fact inside the human body. So here we are almost make a chosen of our implemented transceiver design used for IMD. We select the 400 megahertz IF and 2.4 gigahertz IF. By using such two back frequency band, we can design a single transceiver using to uh, different medical applications. Everybody know the medical device, the amount of device is smaller compared with the commercial device, for example, smartphone. So if we reduce the cost of the circuit, we need to design a platform can be used for different applications. Since we design a chip working on double frequency, we need some reconfigurable architecture inside the transceiver. Also, we have, we have some device, we have some circuit inside the transceiver can be used for the double band communications. Not the double, it's due. It is one time, any time, only single frequency is working. Uh, we can select uh, 400 megahertz or select 2.4 uh, gigahertz frequency band. Sometimes 
when an IMD working inside the human body, we need to transfer, deliver some information out of the human body. Also, we need to receive some comment from the outside of the home body. We're thinking about we are working for IMD. Sometimes we're using the IMD to deliver information to EHD. Sometimes we need the IMD to receive some information out from the EHD. But this channel and this channel is unsymmetry. So when we design a RF transceiver, no matter it working on 400 megahertz backband or 2.4 gigahertz, the transceiver, the transmitter, need a large data rate. And the receiver need a small data rate. So we use the astronomic architecture to implement the different data rate for the receiver and the transmitter. Since we want to keep the size of the circuit be as small as possible so we can reduce the cost, so we can use different data modulation method for the transmitter we're using the MSK for the high data rate. For the receiver, since we only get some comment, we need a small data rate. We're using the OOK modulation. This thing, this architecture is what designed in our group for the IMD transceiver. This is the Mac media access control. This is the mask MSK modulation. This is the DAC and to this one, to transmitter. And for the receiver, for the receiver channel, we use such channel. For reduce the power consumption of the transceiver, then we using a current sharing technology inside our circuit. We are using the zero RF MSK modulation, using the DC current sharing between RF, DAC, and the mixer, DAC. Mixer and RF. We do not using the traditional power amplifier. The mixer directly loaded to antenna. The mixer directly loaded to antenna. For the frequency synthesizer, we still using a current reuse technology to reduce is power consumption. Inside, we have a 800 megahertz LC VCO. They will self celebration on turning range. So double as a career frequency to generate and guarantee the career the carriers. Current reuse between VCO and the cartridge frequency divider. This technology was originally from the paper of Mr. Park. We just use it. As we said, the antenna use the inside of the IMD, they are working in a environment 
with the tissue of the human body or animals. That is totally different with the free space. So, we have some difficulty to achieve good antenna match for IMD in the design uh, inductor servo as the antenna. A virtual transformer works as the antenna. The transformer has a very low coupling. In our appearance, if the inductor has a RF AC current of 10 mag ampere, the receiver antenna can receive 75 dBF signal from outside the home body. Still, we have a circuit to switch between receiver and the transceiver. In our application, the receiver and the transceiver do not work simultaneously. Sometimes the IMD deliver information outside the home body. Another times, it get the comment, get the information from the outside. So the RF RO port is calibrated for resonance at transceiver mode. At the receiver mode, the load, the induct will see different capacitance from the transceiver mode. So by such case, the dummy circuit in the center of this fig is toggle to compensate for the capacity difference between the receiver mode and the transceiver mode. Here is my M media access controller, MacPad. We're using the off-chip memory and off-chip microcontroller to let the whole IF transceiver to work. Before we design a double band transceiver used for the medical applications, we design a 400 megahertz transceiver first. This was the measured parameters of my 400 megahertz transceiver for RMDs. That is the power supply the internal components, the frequency band, number of channels, data rate, the power consumption. The power efficiency is quite good. This is the 1.3 nano joule per bit. When we're working on receiver mode, the bit rate is 64 kilo BPS and the power consumption is 12 microwatt. That is the final result of my 400 megahertz transceiver for RMDs. This have, has some comparison with a commercial product from the link companies, VL, 70081. We have found the all performance is better or similar with ZL70081. This 400 American transceiver design was published in ESCC and 
actually transaction on bio socket at the systems. Before we achieve a 400 megahertz and a 2.4 gigahertz transceiver together, before we integrate them together, we design uh, another transceiver working on 2.4 gigahertz. This transceiver also working for the IMD device for medical applications. This transceiver was designed, manufactured, tested, and uh, be published also in RGB transaction on circuit system the two, the part two. When we working on uh, whole chips, we need a digital power amplifier and the shift register. Here is the architecture of our PA and the shift register. This is the implementation of PA network here, the PA network. This is the die photo of our 2.4 gigahertz transceiver for AMDs. This is the performance of our design. And those were published in the ISSC, ISSC, and the TCAS1. Compare with the performance, our design is better and all similar with others. Those transceiver were published in the conference ISSC. GSCC and the IEEE transaction on CAS1. The audience, you can try to find the people on the, on the general. Okay, if we want to inter integrate 400 together with the two point gigahertz, 2.4 gigahertz on to a single chip. We need to design a reconfigurable slicing IF. This was the design. These people, this result was published on Archibald Journal of Solid State Circuit. The key technologies is we design a reconfigurable sliding IF transceiver inside here. No, I now I give some a little bit of detail about the block, building blocks design. This slide gives some wideband IF front end and off chip matching circuit. Here is the RNA active shot feedback RNA with multiple game enhancement. Here M M1 and M2 provide the GN. M3 and M4 enhancement GM. M5 and M6 feedback for wideband matching. M7 and 8 widen resistance inside the such circuit. We're using class A, B, B, C, reconfigurable power amplifier here. 
Also, we have some matching circuit share by transceiver and receiver. Matching circuit. This slide gives a reconfigurable receiver mixer. That is the RF high frequency amplifier mixer. The circuit, the statement was here. The circuit, like here, this, this position. And this is the one pass for receiver low frequency mixer. This is the statement. This is the circuit. Inside our building blocks, we have a automatic gain control inside inside our chips. That is the automatic gain control flows. First, select maximum RF gain. Then turn V1 to some numbers. Then we predetermine the intermediate frequency gain. Then we change the RF gain by n dB according to interference magnitude of v, VA2. Finally, we check ADC output and adjust VA3 to some numbers. Those results, automatic gain control method, was published in RGBE International Symposium on Circuit and Systems. Inside our chips, the transceiver up convert with the PPF generator is in this, this slide. This circuit it has a second order of PPF, including a polyphase field order and, IS, and IC value, and an inductor senator S with PPF equivalent to capacitor have an ISA tank. This was separate test manufactured of our reconfigurable sliding IF transceiver for IMDs. This design was published in ASSCC and GSSCC. By all such things, we put them together, we achieve a double frequency, double mode, 400 megahertz and 2.4 gigahertz transceiver for double band communications. Those results were published in RTB Transact on CAS, CAS1, this chip. When we design a really worked Transceiver have a double frequency band, double motor, different data rate for transceiver and the receiver. We must make a signal value and a harmonic suppression planning before we start the design. In this slide, we schedule every stage of our design. 
at different frequency. Inside our design, we also including a uh, interference cancellation part. This is the circuit. This slide was the building block of our design for 2.4 gigahertz band receiver IF fresh front end and analog baseband circuit design. This slide gives a frequency synthesis for 2.4 gigahertz. In this slide, a compare of my work here with the similar design published in ISSC. This is the 400 megahertz frequency band transceivers. This is 2.4 gigahertz frequency band transceivers. This also a 2.4 gigahertz. And my chip was working in 400 megahertz and 2.4 megahertz design. We can find the performance is better than the counterpart. Now I finished the talk about the next. We think about if we already have such transceiver, how can we use it? Then I give a few possible applications. Those are working inside my group. I said these are case studies. This is the assumption. We have a wireless transceiver. Those transceiver can be implanted inside the home body. Then the same transceiver can be used outside the home body. Here is IMD. Here are EHD, external host device. The assuming is we have this transceiver. We already finished this transceiver. How can we use it? That is much important compared with the transceiver design. We can't simply say much important. We just can state that without the applications, the chip have useless. The first, we using such transceiver design a capsule, capsule endoscope. Then we can give a very simple explanation of the design. That is the capsule endoscope. In one side of the capsule, that is the camera inside. Another side is the antenna. In the middle is the, bat is the battery. So the people swap each such capsule. The capsule take up the picture inside our 
stomach and all through the channel of our body. They take the picture, they deliver the picture through our wireless transceiver. Simply said, we have a line, we have the image sensor, then we take the picture, they using our wireless transceiver to deliver the date outside of the human body. In our prototype design, we using the 400 megahertz frequency. The data rate from the RMD to outside is about three megabps. Also, <clears throat> we can send some control command inside the home body. We start such design in early 2003. Then we get a chip dedicated user for such applications. Then we get the patent, the Chinese patent. Then we get the prototype in our group, in my group. Finally, we implemented the technical trans transform to a company in Hangzhou, China. In the year 2010, we get the prototype, we got the product. In 2011, the prototype, the product goes through the approval of the Chinese FDA. By such examples, I can tell the audience, if you want to design a circuit. Here, the circuit means the transceiver. Of course, you should think about the performance. The, pop, the performance should be best in the world, in some meaning. In some meaning is that some specifications is the best. Some keep the similar with others. By such a way, you can publish papers, but only publish is a little bit easier. If we want to use your design, use your transceiver for really applications any time. In our case, from the year 2003 to the year 2011, it take about seven years to achieve a really applications of the transceiver. This is the second applications of our transceiver. That means in my group, using the design of the transceiver from our group. We make a really applications. These applications is the balance marrying device for the total knee replacement surgeons. So people know when this, this part is the really metal part for the total knee replacement. This metal part. We design a device between the top part and the bottom part to test the force between the top and the bottom. Then we transmit the information outside the home body to display the distribution, distribution of the force on the, on the screen. 
during the surgeon surgery operations, the physician can look at the screen and check if the balance of the force, if the force is balanced, they can fix those parts to the home body, fix this part and replace the test device to a real one, to a real one. Such device, including a force sensor, also we have some image sensor, we have some multiplex, we have some our transceiver given in this tutorial. Then deliver the information to the H to the EHD. Then display the false balance case. This is the third applications of my transceiver. Uh, this, this transceiver is used to virtualize the surgeon operations for the hip replacement surgeon. Also, we're using a device to measure the balance. This the really case in the operation surgeon. Inside, here, inside, we design a device, design a device to measure the balance of the implement device. Here is the transceiver designed in this tutorial. Here is the same transceiver but using inside the EMD. And we have a sensor, we have an image sensor, we have some digital processing, we have multiplex, then we can implement the medical device. By using the same transceiver, we can also to implement other medical device. This is the fourth implementable in track in track crash initial press sensor. The sensor and the transceiver inside the head of the home body. We deliver the pressure to outside the home body. Those in these applications, the wireless link, here the wireless link is also working on 400 megahertz. So this link is the application of my double frequency band double model reconfigurable IF transceivers. That's, this is the, another one, this is the implant, implantable ECG. So the ECG was implanted here and the deliver the information outside the home body. The final one, the sixth one, was discussed in this, this slide. This is the body sound monitoring system. We put a sensor outside the home body. 
the sensor delivers the information to the EHD. Then we we can to display the information or processing the information into a computer. By these applications, we can check the boring sound recording to diagnose some disease. Long-term positivity is the key fact of your success. I always talking to my student those two sentences. That is very important for your success. Okay, thank you for your attention. Thank you for joining us today. Today is a special case. The coronavirus all around the world. I'm sorry I can't meet with you at this conference. I'm sorry I can't communicate with you the face by face. Anyway, I think this tutorial can be useful for your uh, career. Thank you again. <clears throat> All right, great. Uh, so thank you, uh, Professor Wang, for uh, for this uh, great uh, tutorial. Uh, the floor is now open for questions. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, type that in the in, into the chat window, and I'll read it out, and I'll um, let Professor Wang respond. So uh, one of the questions on the on the uh, on the chat window is uh, uh, from uh, Christoph. Uh, hi, Professor Wang. In the current COVID-19 epidemic, which medical application would benefit most from these new RF transceiver designs? But I already uh, simply uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes. So you, maybe you can. Yeah, uh, you I already can... uh, answered the questions uh, through the text uh, a little. But you know, uh, right now. Uh, the virus is very heavy all around the world. So the check for the temperature or other uh, uh, other criteria should be normal in long period of time for years, many years. So it is possible to use the wireless transceiver to design uh, uh, some sensor to put on the interest of the public place, for example, the uh, conference venue or some hotel or something there. That's possible, but uh, it needs time. Also, yeah. if we can find some, uh, uh, for example, the light X-ray scan or some others, we can put some special uh, interest or some special place. Still, we need the transfer to wireless to, 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 to implement other things. Great, thank you. Uh, any other question on the chat? So I, I have a question. I think I was listening to your talk, and I, I wanted to kind of you know ask your opinion. So for uh, biomedical applications, uh, I would expect you know privacy would be an important aspect of design, right? So uh, from the radio side, do you see any emerging trends, or or you know the, the what is the research community thinking of in terms of security and privacy for some of these uh, biomedical applications? Uh, okay, uh, I try to get to your question. I think there are two questions. The first mm -hmm. is how to consider the design of the transceiver dedicated for using for the medical applications. It is not for uh, very critical for the price. The second mm -hmm. question is how to think about the security. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think the, the first question is you know, for the medical device, uh, we can see it is not so sensitive for the price, but you know. The total amount of the device is smaller, you know. Mm. Uh, for the commercial device, for example, the smart uh, the smartphone. So every year, there are billions of uh, of parts should be shifted all around the world. But for the uh, uh, medical device, the amount of the device should be uh, a few ten or a few t a few ten uh, thousand or some amount of uh, ship shipment. Mm -hmm. In such a way, uh, the you know the price cannot be low. 
Yeah. For the designer, we only we always thinking about using one device, one chipset, to mm. using uh, different applications. But you mm. know, if you thinking about one device that can using the different case, then the performance, especially the power, is the critical. Mm -hmm. So there are some things. Okay. In some cases, we need we think about the the power. Some cases we think about the, the delay or some that. There are some mm -hmm. things compare with uh, some different compare with the mobile communications. True. And the second thing is the security. You know, the security just a new thing for the medical device. You know, mm -hmm. uh, several years ago, uh, nobody think we have. Uh, uh, some hack can attack the, uh, people with a peacemaker. Mm. But nowadays, the wireless connector everywhere, at that beginning, I think in the few, in the long period of time, it is, uh, the requirement for security is heavy than today. Yeah, sure, sure. All right, uh, any other question on the on the bridge? All right. If not, uh, let's uh, thank uh, Professor Wang one more time. And if you, if anyone on the bridge has any question, I'm, uh, you know, please, please reach out to uh, Jay or me or Professor Wang directly, and then we will uh, either um, uh, we will we will either uh, convey your your questions to Professor Wang, and or help you connect with Professor Wang. So thank you, uh, thanks a lot, Professor Wang, for being uh, you know online. And okay, thanks. With all of us. I'm and sorry, I cannot see you. <laughs> so yeah, I think you know, stay safe, everyone. And I, I think should be posting that now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, 